Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're jumping straight in today, uh, looking at something really significant. Major progress, it seems, in the long hunt for an HIV vaccine. Yeah, we're digging into a recent article on news-medical.net. It covers a study in immunity, reviewed by Scripps Research. And our goal here is really to unpack what they found and maybe understand why this is being called such a leap forward. Because, you know, HIV is just notoriously difficult. The main problem is how incredibly fast it mutates. Right. It's not really one virus you're targeting, is it? It's like millions of constantly shifting versions out there. Exactly. Millions of strains circulating globally. So trying to make one vaccine hit all of those, it's been, well, a massive challenge using the old methods. So the thinking had to change. The goal became less about hitting a static target and more about uh, getting the body to make specific kinds of antibodies. Precisely. Broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs, these are the special forces if you like, they can actually block lots of different HIV strains all at once. Okay, BNABs. But the trick is getting a vaccine to reliably trigger the body to make them, right? Even though some people do develop them naturally over time if they're infected. That's been the crux of the problem. How do you teach the immune system to make these effectively? Okay, so let's get into this new study. It sounds like their approach was different, more like a, a strategy, not just a single shot. It really was a very clever uh, two-step strategy. It starts with designing this stable mimic of the HIV spike protein. The spike protein that's the bit the virus uses to get into cells, the main target for antibodies. Exactly. And the key here was making a mimic that's stable, looks very much like the real thing, but doesn't you know, keep changing constantly like the actual virus does. A more consistent target. Okay, like a really accurate training dummy for the immune system. Mm -hmm. So how did they use it? You said two steps. Right, so in non-human primates, step one was priming. They used a version of that stable spike mimic, but crucially, without the usual sugar molecules that coat the virus. Ah, the sugar coat. Yeah. Isn't that part of how HIV hides from the immune system? It is. It's like camouflage. It hides important spots that antibodies would ideally bind to. So by using the sugarless version first, they basically uncovered a really critical spot, the CD4 binding site. That's where the virus latches onto immune cells. The very spot. So this first shot essentially points right at it, saying, look here, this is important. Okay, makes sense. Expose the weak spot clearly first. Then what? What's step two? Step two involved a series of five booster shots, giving one after the other. Now, these boosters use spike proteins with the sugar coat back on, and they use spikes from different HIV strains. Okay, wait. So first, show the target clearly, then give boosters where the target is partially hidden again and hiding differently each time. Kind of, yeah. The idea is, once the immune system is primed to see that specific CD4 binding site, these boosters train it to keep recognizing and attacking that same site even when it's partially covered by those sugars, and even when the sugars look a bit different because they're from different strains. Huh. So it's like teaching it to see through the camouflage after you've shown it what's underneath. That sounds... Well, very deliberate, rational, like the researcher said. Exactly. Not just random vaccination, but a structure-guided, strategic approach to lead the immune system where they want it to go. And did it work? What happened to the animals? Were the results promising? Very encouraging, actually. Several of the animals started producing antibodies that could neutralize these uh, Tier 2 HIV strains. Tier 2 strains. Mm -hmm. Why is that specific detail important? Because those are known to be some of the hardest types of HIV to block. They're more like the strains that actually circulate and cause infections. Seeing activity against them is a really good sign. Okay, so neutralizing tough strains. Yeah. Did they find specific antibodies doing the work? They did, and this is a key part. They isolated specific antibody families. From one animal, they got this family called LJF00034. LJF00034. And how good were these specific antibodies? This is where it gets really exciting. They tested LJF0034 against a big, diverse panel, 84 different HIV strains from around the world. And these antibodies neutralized almost 70% of them. Wow. Nearly 70%. From one antibody family mm -hmm. against that many different global strains, that's... That sounds like truly broad neutralization. It really is impressive breadth. And crucially, they saw similar responses targeting the same general area, the CD4 binding site, in multiple animals. So it wasn't just a lucky break in one individual. So it suggests the strategy itself can actually work. It can elicit these kinds of useful antibodies more generally. Right. And that gets to why this is seen as such a leap. It's not just seeing a good result. It's understanding why it was a good result. They figured out the how. 
Exactly. Richard Wyatt, the senior author, put it this way. He said, what sets this apart is that they didn't just see signs of a response. They actually isolated functional BNABs and figured out exactly where they bind on the virus. Okay. He said, this tells us not only that the approach works, but also specifically why it works, understanding the mechanism. That is powerful. Knowing the why. And did they find these LJS00034 antibodies were binding somewhere unexpected? Yes. They bind to a spot that hadn't really been described before as such a key target. It sort of bridges two different sections of the spike protein. A new target site. A new target site that seems to be uh, conserved enough across many strains that these antibodies can hit it effectively. Finding a vulnerable spot like that, one, the virus can't easily change to escape. That's huge for getting around the mutation problem. Ah, uh, okay. So it's like finding a structural weak point, an anchor, on that constantly shifting surface that the immune system can actually grab onto. That's a great way to put it. A vulnerability they could train the immune system to exploit using this specific strategy. This all sounds incredibly promising, but, you know, where do we go from here? This isn't the final vaccine yet, obviously. No, definitely not. The researchers are clear about that. This is far from a final vaccine. The next steps are about optimizing this approach. Well, maybe tweaking the vaccine components, the doses, the timing between shots to try and get these LJF0034-like responses happening reliably in, ideally, almost everyone who gets the vaccine. And it probably won't be just one vaccine component in the end, will it, okay. given HIV's complexity? That seems very likely. The thinking now is that a truly effective HIV vaccine might need to be a combination. Maybe different components targeting different BNABs, hitting multiple vulnerable spots on the virus at once. Like a cocktail approach, but for prevention. So this newly identified site targeted by LJF00034 is like one really strong candidate weapon for that future arsenal. Exactly. Why it's at having this new, highly effective target is incredibly exciting and will help shape future efforts. It gives them a solid, validated target to aim for. That makes sense. And is any part of this specific strategy moving forward, like into human testing? Yes, and that's really important. The source material mentions that one specific component from this study that sugarless spike protein mimic used for the priming shot is actually already in a phase one clinical trial in humans. Already? Wow, so they're testing its safety and basic immune effects in people right now. Exactly. They expect some early results from that relatively soon. It's a big step, taking something that worked well in primates and seeing how it behaves in people. Okay, so summing this up then, it feels like a really significant strategic step. Yeah. They designed this multi-step vaccine approach, tested it in primates, got these powerful, broadly neutralizing antibodies, and figured out exactly where they hit the virus, this new important site. Right. It's about translating that deep understanding of the virus and the immune system into a concrete, targeted strategy that seems to actually work, at least at this stage. It feels less like guesswork and more like targeted engineering of the immune response, yeah. finding those reliable footholds, as you said. Yeah, it provides real, actionable knowledge to build on. Okay, so thinking about all this, the mutation challenge, this clever prime boost strategy, finding these potent antibodies hitting a new site, and knowing one piece is already in human trials. Here's something to chew on. What does that whole journey really look like? Going from identifying promising targets like this in animals to actually developing a complex, maybe multi-part vaccine regimen that's proven safe, effective in huge human trials, and can be made and delivered globally. Yeah, the gap between a promising result like this and a vaccine available worldwide is, well, it's still enormous. Manufacturing at scale, ensuring access, navigating different populations and regulatory hurdles, figuring out how to combine different components. It's a whole different set of massive challenges beyond the initial science, isn't it? This study is a huge scientific step, but the road ahead is long and complex. Absolutely. Well, thanks for diving into this with us. Really fascinating developments. My pleasure. Important work to follow.